SN18 is graphs of tangent functions, and in 18.1, we're going to talk about the parent function and then its asymptotes and the period of a tangent function. So starting in the upper left corner, the graph of a tangent function looks very different than those of sine and cosine functions. This is because not all angles have valid, tan valid tangent values. When an angle has a tangent value that is undefined, it appears as a vertical asymptote on the graph. So that part is pretty important. I'm going to go ahead and highlight it. When an angle has a tangent that is undefined, it appears as a vertical asymptote on the graph. Um, asymptotes are lines that the function approaches but never actually reaches. So they're kind of like boundary lines where your function itself will not cross those. They'll just get infinitely close to them. And then instead of kind of completing our own input output table um, for a tangent, there is kind of some extra points that are helpful to see the shape of the graph where you don't quite as need them as much for like a sine and a cosine graph. Um, so instead of filling in the whole table, we're just going to analyze it since you can see there's a lot bigger table than when we did sine and cosine. So analyze the input output table for f of theta equals tangent of theta. That's the parent function. It's like the most simple form of the tangent function. And then I'm going to go through a few of the points and just show how we get the like output values to go along with the input values. They're from the unit circle, just like we did sine and cosine. So when we're using tangent, um, the formula for tangent on the unit circle is y over x. So um, you can also think of tangent as like sine over cosine, but we know sine is y and cosine is x. So thinking of it just straight away as like y over x makes it go by a little bit faster. So I'm going to do probably like the first um, like five points from the input output table. So um, the first input is zero and that radian measure is right here and it's at the point one zero. So if I take the y coordinate and I put it over the x coordinate, it'd be zero over one. So it'd end up being zero over one, which simplifies down to just zero. And then the next input value is pi over six, so that point or that measure is right here. So we would take one half and put it over root three over two. So it'd be one half over root three over two. Um, to simplify that, we would like kind of change it to multiply by the reciprocal. It takes a while to simplify, so I'm not gonna go through it in this video, um, but altogether it would simplify to the square root of three over three after you rationalize it. And then the next input value is pi over four. So that measure is right here. So we would do root two over two over root two over two. Any number over itself is just one. So this would simplify down to just one. Um, the next input value is pi over three. So pi over three is right here. So we take the y coordinate root three over two and put it over the x coordinate, which is just one half. And that simplifies just down to the square root of three. It's a little bit different than what we had here just because the order of the like they have the same numbers that we put in for x and y but they switched so like for pi over six um the one half was the y coordinate versus for pi over three the one half was the x coordinate so it made our outcome a little bit different and then um the last input value that we're going to talk about from the table is pi over two so pi over two is right here so we take the y coordinate one and put it over the x coordinate zero so it'd be one over zero, but you can't have a zero in the denominator because it would be like dividing by zero, which is impossible. Um, so anytime you have a zero in the denominator, it'd end up being undefined. So there's one other point on the table or one other input on the table that results in something being undefined. Um, and it's pi, three pi over two, which is down here because same thing, we take the y coordinate, which is negative one. Then we have an, uh, uh, sorry, we have an x coordinate of zero. So we end up putting a zero in the denominator to be negative one over zero, which results in something that's being undefined. And then that takes us back up here where it says when an angle has a tangent that is undefined, it appears as a vertical asymptote on the graph. So those two input values that result in undefined, those are gonna end up being vertical asymptotes. Okay, so we'll stop there and then I'm just gonna point out how those points look like on the um, graph itself. So we talked about how um, anything that's undefined from the table is going to result in a vertical asymptote. So we have a vertical asymptote at pi over two. That's this one right here. So it's already drawn in for us. It's a vertical line that crosses through at pi over two. And then we have another one right here and that's at three pi over two. And again, it's already drawn in for us. It's a vertical line that goes through three pi over two. Um, when you're writing the equation of the asymptote itself, it would be x equals, since it's a vertical line, whatever number it's crossing on the x-axis. So x equals pi over 2, um, x equals 3 pi over 2, just for when you need to kind of practice identifying the asymptote itself. Okay, and then the first few points, I'll go ahead and identify those as well. Um, first point for my table is 0, 0, that's right there. 
the second point is at pi over six and then um, root three over three, which that ends up being about 0. 0.6, like approximately. Um, so that's right here. And then um, pi over four, one right there. And then um, root three, or sorry, pi over three, root three, which um, root three ends up being like about 1.7. So a little bit more than one half. So that is right here, or sorry, one and a half, not one half. So that's about right there at that pink point. So kind of see those first like few points and see how the graph like curves. And then if we continue on the table, we'd get the rest of the points on this graph. Um, but want to really like just have the kind of digital one for you guys so we can see what the shape of the graph is supposed to be. So it's like this nice kind of like curve shape. And then if we were to extend this graph out, it would continue in the same pattern over and over again. So like this curve would continue right here and then we'd have another asymptote. And then we'd have like another curve right here and then we'd have another asymptote and it would also continue to the left forever because all these like sine, cosine, tangent, they're all repeating patterns. Um, the tangent just one looks a bit different than sine and cosine. Okay, so before we move on to the examples, one thing that is significantly different about tangent or another thing that's significantly different is that the period of a tangent function, or at least for the parent function, is just pi. So the period of the parent function f of theta equals tangent theta is pi. So remember that the period is the length of like one repeating portion. Um, for sine and cosine, it was two pi because it took um, like one full rotation around the unit circle before the point started to repeat themselves. And for tangent, it only takes half a rotation, it only takes to pi. So when we're looking at like the period for tangent, we want to look at where does it start? It starts like on the y-axis and that's right here. And then how long does it take before it gets to like that next or that kind of repeated part of the graph? So I know it kind of looks weird because it's two separate ones, um, but like the first, the part that's highlighted in yellow, that's the starting point. And then when it gets to blue, it starts to repeat itself. It's the same exact like curve. So that means that those two that are highlighted in yellow right now, those are like one period. It's one repeating portion. So even though they're kind of split, that's got to be our like pattern. And then that pattern repeats itself um, all the way to the right and all the way to the left. And then the length of that repeated part is our period. So like we're looking right here, we're starting at zero and then going all the way over here and that's pi. So that's a distance of pi. Okay, so moving down to example one, find the asymptotes of the tangent function. So in between every single curve, there's gonna be an asymptote. You won't have any curves that are like side by side without one um, because the asymptote is what kind of creates the like kind of tail ends going up really quickly and down really quickly. So in between every single curve, we'll have one. So we'll have one right here. We'll have one right here. We'll have one right here, right here right here and right here. And then we're just gonna label a few of them with their actual equations. So like, let's say I wanna get this one. So that mark, it doesn't have a tick mark obviously on it, but it's halfway between zero and pi over two. Pi over two is just like one half. So what's the halfway point between zero and a half? It's one fourth. So in terms of pi, that would be pi over four. So we would say this is X equals pi over four. And then let's say, let's grab this one right here. So that one is halfway between pi over two and one pi, which again, this is like one half, this is one. So what's the halfway point between one half and one? It would be three fourths, but we got to include pi. So it'll be X equals three pi over four. And then we'll just do a negative one over here. So let's say this one right here, that's halfway between zero and negative pi over two. So that's gonna be X equals negative pi over four. So we already talked about like each kind of tick mark or like unit on the X axis is um, just pi over four. So we would just continue like to either go up by pi over four or down by pi over four. 
and just do your best to think of it in terms of like one fourth plus one fourth plus one fourth and so on and then just throw the pi on the top after you get your actual fraction um so like this would be this is negative one fourth um this is negative one half which is the same as two fourths this would be negative three fourths negative one um negative five fourths if we needed to go down one but then we would just include the pi in the denominator since we're talking in terms of pi Okay, so moving on to example two, find the period of the tangent function. So the, a reminder, the period is the horizontal length of one cycle. For the parent function, it's pi, but for other functions, it may not be. So on this graph, the part that's in red, that's one repeating portion or one cycle. So we want to find that length, which would technically be here because we're going like from zero to that mark where it's kind of going back into or it's starting over again. But we don't know what that mark is and we can't just like estimate it, unfortunately. So if you don't know what that point is, if it's not crossing like at an exact tick mark, there's a way of finding it. So what you need to do is you need to look for when a new cycle begins exactly on a tick mark. So like for this graph, the next cycle would be from here to here. And then the next cycle would be like starting here and finishing here. And then the next cycle would be starting here and finishing here. So for the cycle that like starts exactly at a tick mark, starts or ends really, it's um right here at pi. So that's the mark that we need. And we're going to take... Um, we're going to count how many cycles are happening between that span of 0 to pi. So I don't need the one after pi. I just need what's happening between um, 0 and pi. So from here to here. And this is one cycle, the one in red. This is a second cycle, the one in green. And then this is a third cycle, the one in blue. So if there's three cycles happening, like over the course of zero to one pi, then one cycle must be just like one third of pi. So we can take pi and then divide it by three to get the length of just one cycle, just the period. So um, I don't have an exact formula for this because it definitely can vary depending on like what your problem is. So um, the pi in the numerator, um, that came from the fact that we crossed exactly at pi right here. That may not happen all the time. It could be 2 pi. It could be like, I don't know, pi over 2 or something like that. Um, it just varies. And then the 3, um, that came from how many cycles we had over that time frame, like over the course of um, zero to pi. So the numerator that came from like, what was the first exact tick mark that it crossed through? The denominator that came over like, how many cycles did we have in that time frame? Okay, moving down to 18.2. So 18.2 had a graph tangent functions. So we're going to go over frequency and midline for tangent function before we get into actually graphing them. So the frequency of a tangent function is it's measured by how many cycles it completes in pi units. So for sine and cosine, it was over the course of two pi. Um, but for tangent, since the period is pi, we're looking at the frequencies, how many times does it happen over the course of pi. So for this one, we're looking from zero to pi. How many times is the pattern repeating itself? So we have to we have to start at the y-axis. I know like it doesn't, it, at least if we're looking from zero to pi, we do. Um, I know it seems weird because we're not like starting at this spot, which is looks like where that kind of curve starts, but we start on the y-axis. And then it goes up. And then we have the kind of second half of that curve or that cycle, that not curve, but that repeating part. And then the next portion is the start of the next cycle. So the part in blue, that's one cycle. So it starts like right here. And then the next cycle would start right here. So the blue is one cycle, the purple is another cycle. And there's two of those over the course of zero to pi. So the frequency would be two. 
So there's the blue cycle, the first one, the purple cycle, the second one. And I know it's the weirdest thing is that they're kind of split into two parts um, each cycle. But the reason is because we have to start right here. And so the next cycle starts in that same exact position on the um, x-axis. Okay, one thing to keep in mind um, before we, we're going to move on to midline in a second, but um, the kind of like starting places for our tangent graphs are going to be on that midline as well. So we want to kind of keep that in mind. Um, and then the midline is going to be a line that goes through what's called the inflection points of the graph. And that's kind of like where the graph kind of like curves the most in the middle. So you can see all the inflection points on this graph are the ones in red. So the midline is going to cross through those. So in this case, our midline, well, in all cases, our midline is going to be a horizontal line. So it's horizontal lines are y equals. And then in this case, it's crossing through at zero on the y axis. So our midline is going to be y equals zero. Remember that it's a line, so it should be y equals, not um, just zero. It should be y equals zero. Okay, before we move all the way down to graphing, the last thing that's kind of different about um, tangent versus sine and cosine is that tangent graphs don't have an amplitude. So tangent graphs have no amplitude because they have no maxima or minima. And that's because the graphs go up forever and down forever. So they don't have like a set high point. They just go up to infinity and down to negative infinity. Okay, so general form of a tangent function. Sorry, I forgot that I wanted to have the graph there for you guys, for example, one with the asymptotes rather than like starting from scratch. So back to the general form of a tangent function up here. Um, it's the same as the general form for sine and cosine, just except for it has tangent instead of sine or cosine. Um, but it's y equals a tangent b of x minus h plus k. Um, in sine and cosine functions, a stood for amplitude and tangent functions don't have an amplitude, but there is still an a. Um, and in this case, it represents vertical dilation, kind of like the stuff that we've studied earlier in the year and we're going to talk about that in a future lesson we won't worry about it here um b is still a frequency so that's no different than sine or cosine k is still the midline again same as sine or cosine and then h is the horizontal shift um, we'll talk about that in a future lesson as well so for today we just have to worry about frequency and um, midline for tangent functions Okay, so example one, graph y equals tangent of 2x. So the midline is the number that's added like after the x, like kind of outside of parentheses if you have parentheses. And we don't have a number there, so that would mean that the midline is at y equals zero. So midline's at y equals zero. I'm just going to go ahead and draw that into our graph. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger so it pops out a bit more. But y equals 0 is a horizontal line. It ends up being the um, same as the x-axis. So it's just a line that goes over the x-axis. And then the frequency, that's b, that's the number that's like between um, tangent and x. So you can see in our function there's a 2 there. So the frequency is 2. Um, that's going to be how many times does the pattern repeat itself over the span of like 0 to pi. And then we can also find the period as well by taking pi and dividing it by b, which in this case is 2. So it would be um, pi over 2. And that's going to be how long does like one repeating part take. So there's a couple of different ways that we can draw this now. If we know that one repeating part takes like uh, pi over 2 because that's the period, we can draw like the repeating portion from 0 to pi over 2, like that, and then draw another one over the same distance, but just like one section over. Um, the other thing is, or the other way that we can draw it, is we know that like between the asymptotes, that's where the curve is going to be. So we can draw our first curve in between those two asymptotes if we want like this, and it's going to be symmetric. And this is, um, I should have said this at the beginning, but this is a just a sketch, like emphasis on sketch. We're not even going to scale the y-axis. Um, we just want to get our curves in the right place and our asymptotes or in between our asymptotes. So we can draw that first curve in the middle and then we know everything else is just going to be a duplicate of that, like continuing to the left and continuing to the right. So we can draw one 
right here and one over here. And then after you have all your curves on there, just double check that what you've drawn matches up with your midline and your frequency. So our midline is already on there. We graphed that it was at y equals zero, so that's fine. And then our frequency is that two. So that means that we're supposed to have two repeating portions over the course of zero to pi. So from zero to pi, that's from here to here. And we have one repeating portion right there. And then we have a second repeating portion right there. So our frequency is two. So it matches up with the information that we pulled up from the function. So keep in mind, I like I'm, tangent functions are another level from like graphing sine and cosine. So keep in mind for all your problems, they will be kind, you'll be kind of presented with different graphs and you just have to make sure that you're able to properly identify um, midline frequency and then period. Okay, so example two, write a rule from the graph. So in order to do this, we have to identify what is the midline and what is the frequency. We don't have to find the period if we're already presented with the graph itself. That's only really helpful when you're setting up the graph from scratch. So our midline is already drawn on there for us. And if it wasn't, what we'd look for is those inflection points, kind of like the middle of the curve, like where it's really shifting. So all those points, and then we can see our um, midline is right here. And to find the equation of our midline, we're looking at where does it cross the y-axis, and it crosses the y-axis right here, and that's at negative 2. So our midline would be y equals negative 2, and that means that our k value is just negative 2. So we'll end up putting a negative 2 in right there. And then our frequency is how many times does the pattern repeat itself over the course of 0 to pi. So 0 is starting right here, and then pi is right here. So how many repeating patterns do we have over that time frame? And then we need to like check our starting place from the midline. Up until this point, our midline has just been at y equals 0. Um, but in this case, a little bit different. So we're starting down here. So it starts right there, goes up. And then this is the second half of that first cycle. And then our second cycle starts right here, it goes up. And then this is the second half of that second cycle. And then our third cycle starts right here and goes up. And then this is the finishing part of that third cycle. So we have one, two, three cycles within the course of or within the span of zero to pi. So that means our frequency would be three because it repeats itself three times and our frequency is B. So we end up putting a three right there. And then once we put those numbers in, we'll have our final answer. So it'll be Y equals tangent of B times X. So that's the frequency three times X and then plus K, which K is the midline, which is negative 2, so we'll just do a minus 2 at the end. So y equals tangent 3x minus 2.